emergency broadcast. We're sorry. All circuits are busy now. Will you please try your call again later? Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper, the video about wall transformers or power adapters and how to read the data plate on them, what's inside them, and how you can emulate or recreate the voltages these things produce for you for your electronic devices should there be an emergency situation where there's some kind of natural disaster or something happens where your wall transformers are lost, destroyed, uh, you just can't find them, or you bugged out and you didn't bring them with you but you have to charge a laptop or a camera or some other device like a GPS how would you create those voltages to power that device if you didn't have one of these wall transformers and all that information is contained on the data plates but before I get into the specifics of what's inside one of these units and how to read that data plate I wanted to show you a practical example here I have my bug out bag laptop computer that I use for my ham radio equipment and right now it's being powered by this 12 volt gel cell battery in combination with five D cell batteries in this tray that I made I showed this in previous videos so each D cell battery is 1.5 volts so I have 12 volts here 1.5 volts times 5 gives me seven and a half volts combining that together it gives me 19 and a half volts and I have these alligator clips going to an older power cord power in the laptop and you can see here on the multimeter I have 19.25 volts so the laptop is loading the batteries down a little bit but as you can see the laptop is operational here without its power cord and it doesn't have a battery anymore that died years ago but I'm able to keep this piece of equipment running without its factory provided transformer sitting here using this battery in combination with some D-cell batteries so there is some flexibility here if you need to power something but before you can do any of this you have to know how to read these data plates so I'm going to break here and then I'll roll into the specifics of how to read these data plates and what's the input voltages what's the output voltages what's inside one of these devices and how it works as I said in the intro we have dozens of these wall transformers or power transformers lying around the house powering all sorts of devices that we use every day but in an emergency if these were lost damaged or destroyed how would you replace that voltage and each one of these devices is different so you just can't move one wall transformer to another device without making sure that it's providing the proper output voltage what's inside one of these things well here's one ripped apart and it doesn't look like much you have a transformer and it's wrapped with an iron core the red tape there is wrapping up what they call the primary or input winding and then the blue tape towards the bottom is wrapping up what they call the secondary or output winding of the transformer and this is just copper wire wrapped next to each other and kind of like two magnets repel each other when voltage and current build up on one winding it creates a magnetic field and it repels electrons on the secondary winding just like a magnet inducing a voltage on the other side without actually being physically connected from there off the blue winding your voltages are passed to four diodes which create what they call a full wave bridge rectifier and in combination with a load resistor and a filter capacitor this will create a DC output voltage a flat voltage kind of like a battery so you're taking an alternating current in on the primary windings and on the output you're getting a DC voltage here's a schematic diagram of a typical 10 to 1 reduction wall transformer with a full wave bridge rectifier and when I say 10 to 1 that means if we put 100 volts in on the primary winding you're only going to get 10 volts on the secondary winding so on the left here highlighted in yellow you have alternating current coming in and that's going to be 120 volts AC not peak but what they call RMS and it's a step down transformer so it's 10 to 1 so on the output instead of 120 volts AC you're going to get 12 volts AC that voltage is going to get passed over to the bridge rectifier working in tandem with the filter capacitor and the load resistor and it's going to create 12 volts DC direct current on the output so here's our first example, a Linksys power adapter, a wall transformer, and I'm sure most people watching this video actually have one or two of these around the house. And this transformer, it has an input voltage of 120 volts AC, and it produces an output voltage of 12 volts DC. 
Another thing to observe when looking at this data plate is the actual plug that comes off this transformer. You know, these little round things that stick into the device. Well, they have a tip and a ring. So this part of the transformer data plate tells you what's the positive and what's the negative. So looking at this data plate, it's saying the center part of the plug is going to be positive and the outer part of the ring or the ring is going to be negative. Here's a Motorola radio charger. Uh, again, input voltage 120 volts AC, output voltage 18 volts DC. So I could not take my Linksys cord and plug it into the Motorola charger because it's not providing the same voltages. Here's my adapter for my Yaesu handheld, and this is a, a good example. Input is AC or alternating current 100 to 240 volts. So I can actually use this overseas because it's not country specific. So there's additional circuits in this device to actually regulate the input voltage to maintain the output voltage. So I don't have to have a, any kind of transformers. All I need to do is have a, a plug adapter and I can plug this in the wall in Europe and I'm good to go because they're 220 where in the states were 120 so they've designed this model to work within a range of 100 volts to 240 volts and the output voltage is 12 volts DC. Now you can see actually set doesn't say volts DC or volts AC they just use the V and then the squiggly line highlighted in yellow represents alternating current and then the straight line with the three dots underneath it is another way of representing DC current so you may see this representation on some of your transformers. Here's a laptop computer example. Again, the input voltage is 100 volts to 240 volts with the squiggly line AC and it goes on to say that it'll take 50 or 60 cycles. In the US our power is 60 cycle. In Europe it's 50 cycle. And the output voltage is 19 volts and again you have that long dash, that long line with the three dashes representing DC output. So that gives you an idea how to read these power transformer cubes to, to get an idea of what the input voltages are and the output voltages. And for emergency planning, if something were to happen, if you were missing that device or it was broken, uh, you could find out what voltages that transformer was putting out using your creativity, a power supply, a solar setup, or batteries. You could match batteries up and replicate that voltage needed for that specific device. I hope I didn't cause any confusion and as always thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper of the video about wall transformers.